Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Clemens Hoyos and I'm an etiquette expert. I believe that networking is the key to a successful business life. In the past 10 years, I was able to study the art of relationships. And especially in the business world, I observed how relationships started, how they grow and deepened, how they last over years, maybe over decades or how they just ended and failed. As most of you probably know, we all need good contacts. We all need a, need a great networking system, which have, uh, helps us to thrive, to grow, to be successful. In every group, there's this one guy who knows everybody, who seems to know just the right kind of person for any kind of problem. It's like, hmm, I need a good dentist. And he's like, oh, I just know the right one for you. Or, hmm, I need a good housekeeper. And he answers, oh, I just know the right one for you. Or, a little bit more challenging, I need a really good babysitter for my baby turtles. And he answers, oh, I just know the right one for you. Wait, what? How is that even possible? How can he know all of those people? And just like we sometimes need a dentist or a housekeeper or a babysitter, as in our private life, also as professionals, we are always looking for someone who can help us to thrive, to grow, to be successful. Hence, I was wondering why some people are very successful when it comes to networking and why others seem to fail. What is the secret of the guy who knows just the right person? What does a great networker do? So, what do you think? Ask yourselves, who of you believes that networking is about knowing famous people? Please, raise your hand. Who of you thinks that networking is about knowing important people? Please, raise your hand. Who of you thinks that networking is about knowing powerful people? Please, raise your hand. All right, thank you. I don't. I don't believe that your ideal network is based on people who are famous or powerful or important. Why? Those relations aren't fruitful if they lack reliability or trust. Think about it. What do you get by knowing a person who is famous but not reliable? What do you get by knowing a person who is powerful yet not trustworthy? What do you get by knowing a person who is important? Whatever that means. Who's important? I tell one. You are. You are important. Let me explain how to create a system that automatically attracts the right kind of person. Again, who's important? You are important. That's why we start with you. You are the center of your networking universe. Networking is gravity. Again, who's important? You are. And how do we create that kind of gravity? We need three steps. Step one, I call the invitation test. The three test, uh, steps, and the number one is the invitation test. What is the invitation test? Imagine you're going to meet a person for the first time and you have to decide if the person is worth being a part of your professional network system. This is how you do it. You ask the person for a simple favor. For example, bringing the newspaper or being at a special place at a certain time. 
A few weeks ago, I wanted to meet, let's call him John. John is an expert in staffing, top executives in top positions, and I thought he might be an interesting person to meet. So I asked John to meet me at a specific place at a certain time. In my case, it was a side door of a hotel. And as most of you know, it, is, it takes quite an effort to find the side door of a hotel. You need to go the extra mile. Nevertheless, John showed up at the side door just in time. John passed the first test. Now I am sharing a secret with you. And even those who already know me might not be aware of it. I'm using the invitation test every time I'm meeting someone new. I do that to see if the person is willing to do the extra bit of work or not. Lately, I arranged a meeting with an SEO specialist, and before we met in person, I asked him to think about three main points he's going to change regarding my website. Not only did he show up late, he also was unprepared. He had one job. Even though he failed the invitation test, I was still, of course, being polite, treating him with respect. My second step is the reciprocity test. How does the reciprocity test work? If someone passed the first test and you see potential synergies, maybe feel sympathy, you might want to see the person a second time. And here's the clue. When you are meeting the person for the first, first time, of course it is you inviting the person, simply because always have someone owe you something. Reciprocity is an exchange of favor. Invite someone for a cup of coffee, and the next time you meet, simply check if the person invites you, invites you in return. This is our way to show our appreciation, our empathy, our gratitude. The first test is about reliability. The second test is about mutuality. It is all about finding the right person for our networking universe. And the right ones are those we can trust. According to Stephen Denny, trust comes from, or trust is built on credibility. And credibility comes from acting in the interest of others before your own. And this is the main reason why you recommend certain people. It's a recommendation test. Why? I recommend people who act not only in their own interest, but in, in, in the interest of others. Because the value of networking is not determined by the number we know. The value of networking is determined by the number we can introduce to each other. One part of my job is to offer business dinners to introduce certain aspects of business etiquette. And in one of those business dinners, I met someone called Moritz. Moritz is the CEO of a meta company their main aim is to design and to produce great medical prosthesis. A few weeks later, I met Robin, giving a training at one of the universities I'm working. And Robin's idea is to create or to design an exoskeleton which can help people who suffer from Parkinson's disease. Since, I, since Robin appeared to be quite reliable, I introduced him to Moritz. Since then, both are working together to create that great medical device which helps Parkinson, people with Parkinson's disease. And for me, that's the main aspect of networking. Networking is not about knowing many people. Networking is about introducing people to each other, to combine their ideas, their energy, their working spirit to build something which is taller, 
than the single person. It is about building something which is greater than our own networking universe. We try to build something which is taller than our own solar system. We want to create a solar system. We want to create a networking system where people can add social value. My take-home message for you is, and if you only remember one thing from today, be a giver and use networking as a tool to create your own universe of givers. Thank you very much. Thank you.